Good morning, everyone. Luke with Premium Aquatics here. We are looking at, of course, the tank. Like I mentioned last week, we are looking at the Reef Kinetics Reef Bot. Last week, we went over the actual unit and showcased it. Uh, this week, like I mentioned, we are going to be going over the app. So, without further ado, let's take a dip into the app. Go to your phones, download the app so you can take a look at it. As you can see here on my phone, I have it right here next to all my other aquatic apps. Let's open this up. And I've already got this set up since I did do a test, but basically... Um, when you set something up here, you'll go into the screen and uh, you'll be able to add devices if you want to. Uh, you'll be able to go over here, add tanks. As you can see, we've got uh, my tank set up, Plankton. This is my reef bot unit here. So what we are going to do from this point here is we can go into my tank and you'll see the test that I have done here. Um, I actually did one today earlier, just testing it out and doing some... Uh, app work with it uh, for this video, but um, here on this front page on the dashboard, we'll call it here, uh, you can see the test that you have recently done. Um, so we'll go over this real quick. You can schedule a test. You can put in a manual result, which means that say you don't want the reef bot to do it or the reagents aren't in the reef bot and I want to go and do ammonia. I can go in here, click on the, the manual results and put it in manually what my ammonia was at. That way, when I'm looking at my charts and graphs and seeing the history on it, it'll all be correct and I'll see everything, not just what the reef pot has done, which is kind of important because you want to be able to see everything under one housing, makes it easy to do. So from there then, we have uh, our test that we just did. And if we scroll down, we see other tests, and we can obviously go in here and we can force it to do a test right now if we want to. Uh, we'll just choose our device, which obviously I just have the one. We choose a parameter. Uh, it'll automatically fill in the brand, and then we just hit perform test, and it'll sync up to the reef bot and start doing its test. So I'm not going to do one yet. We'll do one in a little bit here. But also on this page, you can see we have chart view, which is pretty cool. So we can actually go into the chart here and we can see our different parameters and where they were prior and where our new ones are. And eventually, as we fill this out and we do more and more tests, it'll start graphing everything a little bit nicer for you instead of just having three dots here. But if I hover over it, I can see what the test was, when it was performed and what my results were. Same thing with the alkalinity new phosphate, and then we can also uh, go ahead and zoom in if we want to, to get, if you have a wider range or like there, we were just zoomed in uh, to these three here, but I actually do have one more when we did the video last week. So if we look at this one, that's the alkalinity that was done on 12.2, or I'm sorry, 2.12, because they have that backwards, my apologies. So we can see what we've done, the tests, the dates right here, uh, we do have a safe margin that we can set within uh, the parameters here, what we want to do. And uh, if it's outside of that safe margin, then it can send us a push notification or an alert, basically, to let us know what's going on with it. So from here, uh, like I said, manual test, we can add in here, go to whatever test we want to, enter our value, and then save it. And it will also put it on the graph. If we look down here on our main board, we can see uh, where we're at now as dashboard. We go to the tests now. We'll look at being able to set up a schedule for the tests that we want to do. So we can do uh, where we schedule it. We can do, again, our manual results, and then we'll show our pendings. It'll show a schedule and show history. Um, I've got only one schedule right now that I showed off um, <laughs> earlier. I set up earlier, and I'll show it again. But this basically says uh, I'm doing a phosphate. It's going to be doing weekly on Saturday. It's going to be running for four times. So once four times has been taken up, it will shut down and no longer do any. And this is also active. Then if I want to, I can go in here and edit or delete this. And let's go ahead and just delete it so I can redo it for you. So let's go ahead and schedule a test. We can do whatever we want to. We have to have a task name. We'll do phosphate. Oops. Phosphate. And then weekly. Then we have our 
uh, reef bot. You need to pick which one, what we're going to be testing. Uh, we want to change that to phosphate. It's going to automatically update the brand for us, and we'll select our time and date, which uh, we'll just say let's do tomorrow at I don't know what do we what do we say 9:50 p.m. So it's not interrupting anything. And so then we're going to select the operation on how frequently we want this to be done. If we want it on um, the hourly, that means it's going to be testing this every X hours. So when we can go here, we go every 11 hours if we want to. Or if we're doing tests because we're worried about something happening uh, or that something recently happened and we want to do weekly tests, we can have it do every two weeks, every one week. Or if we want to do daily, we can have it do every two days to keep track of it over that period of time. Or, of course, you can even go uh, as far as making it monthly or yearly if it's something that you do not test very often and you have a lot of different options there. So let's say let's do it uh, weekly, uh, every one week. Um, Sunday is we're going to do Saturday and then we can make it so it ends. So it can end after X amount of occurrences or it can end on a certain day uh, and then we'll be good to go. So obviously we want it to be active. So we add it to schedule. It'll tell us a summary of what we just set up and we just confirm it. And bam, now you can see we have it all set up. We can go over here, we can edit it and delete it if we want to again. So super simple on setting that up. Next, let's run over to manage, which basically is going to be managing our safe margins as well as being able to see our alarm history. Uh, safe margins, it's just for literally about everything you could want, whether or not it's uh, something that ReefBot is doing, uh, like say temperature. We can go ahead and hit edit and we can put the safe values. If we want um, it to be different than what it's already set up, they actually have everything pretty well set up for you already on uh, just basics. So that's what this page is about. Then we go to devices, real simple. It just shows you what devices are linked. And we can also assign a new one. And then if we go in settings, it just tells us about our tank, actually. So, uh, and that's where we're going to set up and we can actually edit it down here or delete it if you change it to another tank and you want to do something else. Uh, but if we go up here, when we're hitting uh, and say we want to add a tank, if we click on this, here is where we're going to basically create a tank. You put your tank name, tank type, dimensions, volume, all this jazz, and then you hit create and then it'll create the tank like it did for me. So really this app is very, very simple to use. You can actually do it on the dashboard on a website as well. So you do not have to do it through the app. You can do it from your desktop, from your laptop, whatever you want to do, as well as, you know, obviously a tablet just as easy. It's got the same type of setup as we see here. So now that we've run over this, Again, it's real simple to do. Um, when we go back to our test, if we if we look at what we did here, um, you can see when I did the test, this is the color that we got, our results, what it was performed by, the brand, uh, what a previous result was, and then you can see even the upcoming test that we have scheduled. If we click on the uh, color graph here, it'll actually pull up a graph just for this parameter. So we are just now in phosphates. And you can see here my first test, my second test. Um, and if I hover over it, you can see what happened uh, on the 19th. We got 0.02. Today, we got 0 0.00. And then it'll tell you the results as far as what color it read, what the results were. And then it actually shows you uh, the little graph as if you would see it uh, in if you were holding the actual color chart uh, from Red Sea. This is what we'd be looking at. And again, of course, it gives you a little history. So that's all there. Okay, so now, of course, we may need to add tests to the unit um, to put in a new, re uh, not a new result, but a new parameter that we want the reef bot to do. So if we go in here uh, and we click on our bot, it's going to bring up what is installed into this reef bot. As of now, you can see tube one and tube two are both Solifer KH. Tube 3 and Tube 4 are the Red Sea PO4. As you can see, slots 5, 6, 7, and 8 are very empty. So what we can do then uh, is we can go ahead and add. So we went from dashboard, you can either click on the tube that you want uh, or go over to manage. 
and it asks you what tests you want to perform. So say we have a calcium that I want to do, and I want to do Red Sea Calcium. I'm just going to check on that, and we have to go down here and where our locations are. Here it already put it into 5 and 6, so we can either keep it at 5 and 6, or if we want to, we can go over here and change it to 8 and seven or whatever two we want to and then we would obviously hit save and it would update that i don't have that so i'm not going to add it but you can see here the four test tubes that i do have and i can still go and change those even so if we go over the activity we can see the activity between 220 or 212 and 212 and we can go ahead and um you know, widen that and it tells us our history of what has been happening. And we can also go to maintenance, which will allow us to calibrate if we need to. It says it's still in calibration, so we don't have to worry about anything. But then it's going to talk about our RO, our waste syringe, uh, and also our chemicals. It's going to tell us what point we are at with those items. So with, say, for instance, my RODI, I put in that I have a nine liter container and I've used 0.37 of that nine liters. So we are at 4%. I can then refill it or set it manually again. And same thing with your waste. And the big thing here to take a look at is the syringe. So for now, this with the syringe, I've used it five times out of their recommended 60. So once that has hit 60, this will be at 100%, and it'll tell me the replace, which then, of course, I will go in here, and I will hit replace and confirm this, and I will reuse a new syringe. Um, obviously, you can take the risk of not doing it, but to make sure that we are precise, I would definitely recommend following the uh, manufacturer's recommendation on that. Same thing with our chemicals. We can actually go ahead and set all these if we want to um, and reset them if necessary. There's not a whole lot to it. It's really simple to get set up. It's really simple to schedule your tests, and you have such a wide range of what you can do with it that it really is a, a cool setup, a cool machine, and I'm, I'm loving what it offers to the hobby, and especially because you can get more vials and add more. And there actually is a pro unit that's coming out um, that's special order right now. It actually has the ability to do 21 vials and hold 21 at one time. It's much, much more expensive, and it's more meant probably for the retail hobby or retail uh, scenario as opposed to uh, just the average hobby because of how expensive it is. But if you have a monster system and you uh, you know want to look at that, and you want to have that all under there. Take a look at it. Uh, we're working on getting that on the site as well. But uh, that is something they are bringing out and will be coming out. So that's really cool. So let's go ahead and we're going to hit uh, go back to the dash. We're going to go back to the dashboard for the whole unit. We're going to set a test up. We're, we're just going to do it. We're going to perform it. I don't want to wait for my schedule. I need this test done now because something happened, and I want to see what it's at. So we're going to go over to the dashboard, and we're going to hit test now. So let's go ahead and hit it. It's going to say, okay, test now for phosphates. Yep, that's exactly what I want. Uh, we got to choose our device. Already filled out the brand for us. Everything the same. And then we're just going to hit perform test. Then it's going to take us to this next page. Uh, it says test submitted successfully. And it's going to bring us here, uh, which actually is not what I meant. Then, uh, so now it's going to start syncing up with our unit, and it's going to start performing the test. If we go over to tests, now we can see that there is a pending test. Pretty soon, uh, this pending will change into, uh, I think, in progress, if I recall right. So it'll change it um, that it's in progress, and it'll be doing its work. And right here, we can see the time that we started. Normally, like I said before, these tests are longer than normal. Uh, you know, with a handheld test, it might take you 10 to 15 minutes, um, including the wait time for the color. Uh, this thing usually takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes with the test that I've done. So it is longer, but you're also not doing anything, so it's not a big deal. Not sure if you can hear that in the background, but my refot has kicked on, and it is now doing work. So really easy to do. Soon we'll take a look at this here again, uh, and we'll check out the results that it brings back. So, all right, guys. So we're back here. As you can see, our pending re our pending test is now empty, so it has completed its test. As you can see here, it was completed at 3:48 p.m., which means this took a little over 40 minutes. I don't remember exactly when we started this, but uh, I believe it was a little bit after three, so a little over 40 minutes. We have a result of zero ppm. What did it? What uh, brand we used? 
our previous results, and our next test. So now if we go into it, we can check out the graph again, see our new point here on the graph, compare it to previous tests, and then of course we can see uh, our color that they got and where we'd be reading it. This is an awesome machine so far. I am loving it. Uh, there's only been one issue that I've had with it, which was my first test, and that was completely my fault and human error. I didn't put magnetic stirs in those last two vials, didn't realize uh, if they had them or needed them yet, so I didn't put them in there, so completely my bad. Beyond that, every test has been flawless so far. I'm loving it. Can't wait to see what Reef Kinetics continually does with this piece of equipment as it progresses with test kits and the abilities of what it's going to be able to do. Uh, there's going to be more to come. I know it, so we'll uh, stay tuned and sit back and uh, just see what this evolves into because there's a lot more room for growth and uh, what it can play with, uh, like Neptune uh, and Apex, uh, you know, a Neptune Apex unit and vice versa and so forth. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Greatly appreciate it. A link will be in the description below to go check it out again. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let us know. If you haven't already, you know the drill. Like, share, hit that bell for notifications so you stay the most update on this system, as well as the other videos we're putting out. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a great weekend. I will catch you next week.